Uh, hi, everyone. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, we are super excited to, excite, uh, to share our work, Emergence of Shape Bias in composition, com Convolutional Neural Networks Through Activation Sparsity. Uh, this is joint work between me, Tianqin, and Ziqi, Yang Fan, and Tai Xing. Current deep learning method, especially convolutional neural networks, rely heavily on texture of image during recognition. And this is illustrated on the screen. For normal image, such as the first and the second image, a trained model would correctly classify them as elephant and cat. However, when mixing the first image style with the second image shape, the model would use the style or texture of the image to perform the classification, which results in recognizing the image as elephant. However, we human do recognize the third image as a cat. Efforts has been made to improve the shape bias of the model, including various proposals in training objectives and architectural innovation. Note that the recent work of Vision Transformer performed very high in the shape bias evaluation benchmark, although there's still a gap between machine learning models and human performance. We can intuitively feel our ability to recognize by object by shape through these examples on the screen. Here are two paintings from 10,000 years ago. The textures on the image doesn't resemble the textures on the natural image we normally see our, in our daily life. So we can only inference the object meaning through their shape information. Yet we can still recognize the drawing content robustly. Our amazing ability to recognize by shape let us ponder the underlying computational mechanism for our brain. Specifically, we want to ask, what is the design principle in human vision system that leads to our strong shape bias? And furthermore, how can we leverage them to improve the machine learning models? If we look at the neuroscience study, there are rich evidence of activation sparsity. And more recently, imaging results also shown that our brain is even more sparser than we previously thought. Only 0.5% of the V1 neuron response varies strongly to any given natural images. And the rest of the neurons, they are encoding information, but their response are weak. For the strong response neurons, they also exhibit high selectivities, and they would only respond strongly to 0.4% randomly selected natural images. This observation makes the neurons become a specialist, specifically encoding a unique pattern. This evidence leads us to rethink about how the brain represents the input signals. There are, in general, two school of thought on neural representation encoding scheme. The localization uh, encoding scheme and its relaxed version of semi-localized sparse coding versus distributed coding scheme. The first one, is a very old idea suggesting that for a specific input stim stimulus, only one indexing neuron would fire. Therefore, neuron would encode information in a one-hot fashion. Extreme localized coding represents the highest degree of decompositionality and interoperability. This is the main motivation of various theories, including the grandmother cells originated in the 1960s. However, one hot encoding limits the representational power and generalization ability. A more relaxed version is proposed as a semi-localized sparse code. In this case, semantic components of an object are encoded by a spe specific group of neurons. Overall, this sparse code can compositionally represent objects by their components, therefore enabling models to decompose the object semantically for robust inference. On the other hand, distributed coding scheme consider object being encoded by a population of response. An input would activate most of the neurons, but the subtle difference in the population neuronal response can uniquely characterize the input stimulus. This increases the model's representation power and ability to handle the real-world high-dimensional signals. It is therefore used as the primary coding scheme for deep neural network for the past 10 years. However, in this paper, we propose that 
deep neural network should contain both sparse code and distributed code to harness the power of both structural representation from the sparse code and the generalization ability from the distributed code. Inspired by the strong firing nature of the sparse code in the brain, we artificially consider the strongly activated neurons inside a deep neural network to be sparse specialist code and the weakly fired neurons to be distributed population code. This design would allow a better organization of the object representation. For the strongly activated sparse code, it should represent object parts and key components and allow easy compositionality. For weakly response distributed neurons, they could represent object details and textures, ensuring the representation power of the network. Here, we implement our design by enforcing a sparse top K operation inside certain artificial neural networks layers while keeping other layers intact. We report three main results. First, we confirm that these strongly activated neurons can indeed encode shape and structure information, whereas the weakly responded neurons encode textures and details. Second, we observe that incorporating the proposed sparse code can indeed improve the model's shape bias. And finally, we show that incorporating the sparse code inside the generative models will also help image synthesis. First, let's begin by showing the separation by firing magnitude is indeed a good choice of separating shape encoding and texture encoding. We use a gradient-based optimization to visualize the strongly activated, activated neurons encodings. Specifically, we first mark the top K neurons of the network when passing through an image. Next, we optimize the random image so that it would match the marked neuron response in the previous step. This would allow us to directly visualize what the strongly activated neuron encodes. And conversely, we could use the same method to visualize the weakly activated neuron as well. The results confirm our design's validity. Separ se separating neurons into strongly activated neurons and weakly activated neurons can successfully isolate the shape and texture features. We can see that reconstruction of top key neurons focus more on the shape, boundary, and overall structure encodings whereas the weakly responded neurons indeed focus on the textures and details. Next, we show our design improve the model's shape bias. First are some qualitative examples. If we put this texture perturbed image into AlexNet, it will give us the following misclassification results. It will consider the first image as an elephant, the second image as dog, and the third image as a clock, and the, the last image as boat. However, if we enforce sparse code, the model would correctly classify the object by their shape, mitigating the local texture conflict. Here are more quantitative results. Across diverse set of classes, we're evaluating the model's shape bias. On the left are the human and baseline models of shape bias. We can clearly see that humans are biased towards shape, yet AlexNet are biased towards textures. However, by enforcing sparse code inside CNNs using top K, the model shape bias can be significantly improved. In general, we found that smaller model with sparse activation could reach similar performance as sophisticated VIT models on shape bias task. The red line here is the shape bias of transformers across different classes. And the green line here is the shape bias of a small CN such as AlexNet or VGG with a sparse encode activated. Additionally, we also show that activation sparsity can help improve the shape bias of deeper models like ResNet50 and VIT. So finally, we found that sparse code can also encourage coherent image synthesis, which is another benefit of improved shape bias of convolutional neural network. 
In the few shot image synthesis task, we install the sparse top key layer to enforce network to form specialist sparse code. With this explicit emphasis on shape and structures, the object shape is clearly synthesized as shown on the left, comparing to the corresponding baseline models where the models are biased towards textures. Quantitative results on the right also confirm the improved synthesis quality. We also look at the internal activation of the sparse code and found that they indeed learn to, to form decomposable parts and component of the object. Although top K operation is non-differentiable, the sparse operation can um, still manage to evolve into connected components and eventually form semantic parts. We suspect that this is due to the smoothness of convolution operation and the top K selectivities. We we'll refer to more detailed discussion in our paper. To conclude, in this paper, we decompose the neural network's activity into sparse code and distributed code using neural firing magnitude. We first demonstrate that the strongly fired neurons encode shape and structural information, whereas the weakly activated neurons encode textures and other details. Next, we show that by explicitly enforcing sparse code in convolutional neural networks, the model shape bias will emerge, leading to improved robustness against texture perturbation and better image synthesis quality, where shape and structures are hard to learn in the original setting. Thank you for your attention. We'll host our paper uh, in the poster section, and hope to see you there. Do we have uh, any questions? Yes. Go ahead. Hi. Um, is it possible to tune K in your method to um, go towards more shape bias or less shape bias? That's the first question. And the second one is, uh, do you find that uh, reducing um, texture bias leads to loss in performance? So uh, we found that uh, in some cases, um, uh, incorporating a large degree of sparsity will actually harm the performance of normal classification. But um, in, if we control the sparsity properly and let them to kind of cooperate with the distributed code, then um, uh, there's little uh, uh, drop in performance in terms of classification. And in sometimes it even um, serves as like additional regularization. Thank you. Hey, thanks for, for this nice talk. Uh, have you tried to check uh, uh, whether sparse coding could help with uh, robustness to adversarial examples? So uh, I think previously uh, people do find that uh, having a sparse code would actually mitigate the, um, the issue of uh, noise uh, perturbation. However, um, we, uh, in this work we focus on the shape bias and more like generalization settings of the shape. OK, thank you. Excellent work. Uh, so uh, have you thought about uh, in implementing a learnable uh, parameter where you can uh, drop the neuron from fire, or not firing, but say activating if the variance in the input is less, you know, inversely proportional, make it fire or not fire? Uh, and combine that with this top K, so the network itself will figure out how much shape bias it wants and how much texture bias it wants. Yeah, so uh, the shape bias is evaluated by uh, the amount of, uh, so we, uh, we're using this uh, benchmark from uh, previous work where uh, uh, we evaluate among all the corrected classified images um, how much, uh, how much the image is classified based on the shape and how much is classified based on the texture. Uh, because the data set itself already have a Q conflict uh, texture and shape. OK. Uh, so I, I think one of the reasons why the transformers might be more shape bias uh, is because of like, you know, when, uh, the, when they're looking at the, the, the cross attention or the, you know, the self attention it probably ignores uh, the
the say if you're looking at a cat fur, you know, variance is not as much as uh, uh, in when the attention is moving across the cat. So I don't think that uh, attention values are as high inside the cat, you know, like where the, the fur is. But when as the attention moves along outside the boundaries, and then the attention will be probably pretty high. And then I think what, that's one of the reasons why probably attention mechanism works well for shape bias, which is why I was thinking maybe you can put a, a kernel or a, some kind of a, uh, yeah, filter. Yeah, we, we do head. agree, yes. Um, we think, uh, so we're only evaluating the uh, feed forward models, and I think uh, more um, relationship models, like recurrent networks, would definitely help the shape bias, but we're still uh, doing the work right now. Yeah, I would love to chat with you. I've been working on this Thank for you so quite much. a while, yeah. actually. So. Uh, hi, uh, great work. So I was wondering if it is um, possible. Sorry, we're going to have to end the the Q and A session because we're a bit over time. So okay. I'd like to ask, I'd like to thank the speakers, <laughs> Jan, in the session. Wait, can you, do you guys want to stay and ask your questions? Yeah, and if the speakers will stay uh, up here and answer questions after. But we, yeah, yes. We just so want to thank all the speakers feel, for. It. Yes, feel please feel free to come over here to uh, ask the remaining questions for these the speakers. And um, one more time to thank all of the speakers from the uh, Vision Neuroscience Object Session. Thank you.